This is another example of using mathematical induction to prove that a statement is true for all natural numbers n and n. The statement that we're going to work with here is that 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 to n, that entire quantity, so the sum of that squared, is equal to 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 up to n cubed. So the sum squared is equal to all the cubes summed. That's what we want to establish for all natural numbers n. First thing I like to do usually is just plug in a few values just to kind of see that this kind of makes sense and how it works out just to get a feel for things. So let's just do that real quick. This isn't a proof, it just gives us a little insight into what's going on here. For example, when n is 2, the left side of the equation says that we need to take 1 plus 2 quantity squared, which is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. The right side of the equation says we need to have 1 cubed plus 2 cubed, which is equal to 1 plus 8, which is equal to 9. So that checks out as it should. It's what we're trying to prove and establish. What about for n equals 3? Well, the left side of the equation says we need to add up 1 plus 2 plus 3, the entire quantity squared. That's equal to 6 squared, which is equal to 36. The right side of the equation says that we need to add up 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed, which is equal to 1 plus 8 plus 27, which is also equal to 36. So again, this checks out. So just Plugging in a few values for n gives us a little feel for what this equation is really doing. It's not a proof by any means, but it gives us a little insight into the formula. To actually prove it, we're going to use mathematical induction. The first step is to always establish that our statement is true. So what is our statement here? So this right here, we are going to think of as a statement p. And this p is actually a different statement for each natural number n. So we actually call it p of n because as n changes my mathematical statement that I'm trying to establish changes. So this is my statement p of n and I wanted to show that this is true for all natural numbers n. So the first step that we always do in induction is first establish that p of 0 is true. And in this case this is trivial to check because when n is equal to 0 the left side of my equation is 0 squared the right side of my equation is 0 cubed, so obviously 0 equals 0. So establishing p of 0 is very easy, so that step's done. The next step when doing an induction proof is to let n be a natural number and assume that pn is true. So we do that, let n be an n and assume pn is true. And then our goal now is to say or derive that p of n plus 1 is true. So to do that, we start off by computing p of n plus 1. So let's start with the left side of the equation, the 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 all the way up to n plus 1, the entire quantity is squared, because I want to work on pn plus 1. So instead of adding up to n, I've gone one more and I'm adding up to n plus 1. And I'm taking this entire quantity and squaring it, just like my equation says that I need to do on the left hand side. So we're going to work on this now, and we're going to turn this into 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 plus n plus 1 cubed. That's our goal, to manipulate it into that form, and then we'll have established that p of n plus 1 is true. So let's go ahead and just do some algebra now. So what does it mean for this quantity squared? That means we have the quantity times itself. That's just the definition of squaring something. So that's not too difficult. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. So the first term is going to be 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 n times itself. And then we're going to have two of the same cross terms. We're going to have 2 times 1 plus n plus 1 times 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n. Those are the cross terms. And then the last term is going to be n plus 1 squared. Okay, so these are the four terms that we get when distributing the multiplication. And then two of the terms have been lumped into this middle term because the cross terms are the same. So that's what we get. Well, what is this equal to? This is equal to that first term squared. So all I've done is combine these into the square, so that's nothing difficult. And we'll just leave the rest of this alone, except let's factor out an n plus 1. If you look over here, we have an n plus 1 sitting here, and we have an n plus 1 sitting here. So really, all of these terms, I can combine into one term with an n plus 1 factored out front. So I'm going to pull an n plus 1 out front, and then put parentheses and put the other terms. So I still have a 2 times 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 n, and then this was an n plus 1 squared term, so I still have 1 n plus 1 here, 
but all I've done is factor out an n plus 1. So that's not too bad. So what does this equal? Well, we can simplify this some more. I'm going to use my assumption. We're going to assume that p of n is true. So I know what 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n is equal to, and it is equal to 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 plus n cubed. Okay. So that's one thing I can simplify right there. I have to add plus n plus 1, so I haven't changed anything here, times quantity 2. What about this part right here? What is 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n? What is that equal to? Well, we've already worked a problem just like that. We know exactly what that is equal to. That is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. We worked a previous problem, another video, where we worked out exactly what that is equal to. And then we have to tack on the plus n plus 1. One thing I noticed here, I've been copying and pasting, and I should have a plus right there on lots of these. So don't let that mess you up. There should be a plus n on all these. I apologize. I'm copying and pasting, so my error has replicated itself, but there should just be a plus there. Don't let that confuse you. Okay, so we're continuing to manipulate. So this is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 plus n cubed. And then what have I done here? All I've done is let the 2 and the 2 cancel each other out. So I've canceled those out. And now look at this. On the inside here, I have an n plus 1 on each of these terms. So again, I can factor out an n plus 1. So let's leave the front part alone. And then let's factor out an n plus 1 on these interior terms right here. So I have to have an n, and I have to have a 1. Okay, now we're really getting there. So leave the front part alone. What is this? What is n plus 1 times n plus 1 times n plus 1? Well, that's just n plus 1 cubed. Okay, so I've manipulated this whole thing into 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 plus n cubed plus n plus 1 quantity cubed, which is p of n plus 1. So starting off with this computation, assuming that p of n plus 1, p of n is true, we use that right in here, here is where we use p of n, we assumed was true, we were able to conclude p of n plus 1. So, we have known what we needed to do. By induction, we now know that p of n is true for all n in the natural numbers n, and our proof is complete.